Hello friends, it's Mike coming at you from my bodywork practice. Let's talk briefly about medial knee pain and the saphenous nerve. Now suppose you've got someone in your care who's got recurrent pain in the medial knee. Um, it seems to be related to repetitive stress of some kind and there's not a clear injury mechanism. Moreover, uh, you're not seeing results from your normal approaches. This is a situation where in addition to the normal orthopedic testing and good history taking, you might consider pain of a neurogenic origin, pain that is being driven by irritation to the saphenous nerve, which innervates the structures on the medial knee. So what do I mean? Well, let's take a look at our patient here, Rodrigo, having a chill day lying on the table. And let's say that we've taken a good history and we don't have any clear clues as to a driver of medial knee pain. Of course, we could still look at the, the mechanics as, as Rodrigo walks or loads the leg. Um, but most good orthopedic approaches will involve checking out, stressing the patellar mechanism in some way. So you're going to test the quadriceps um, at load. You're going to watch the tracking of the patella and the patellar retinacula. You're going to look at the infrapatellar bursa, the patellar ligament, um, and just see if stressing that system generates familiar pain. Um, you're probably also going to look at the mechanism of the tibiofemoral joint, right? So the collateral ligaments, the cruci cruciate ligaments, and uh, the menisci. But suppose you're not getting a clear positive in any of these domains, or suppose you're getting a sort of weakly positive set of results with no clear uh, injury mechanism. Another thing that should be on your map here is the path of the saphenous nerve. So imagine the quadriceps compartment here, the fascia lata, right? And as you walk your way along the medial quad, you get to a sulcus, you get to a valley between the quad and the adductors. And along that valley, is traveling a branch of the femoral nerve from L2 to L4, crossing in between psoas and iliacus and then spilling out the inguinal canal. And as the femoral nerve, the larger bit, starts to perforate into the quad compartment, there remains one superficial branch, the saphenous nerve, which travels in that sulcus between quad and adductors superficially until just above the knee, it enters into a bit of a fascial tunnel couple inches long just above the medial femoral condyle and then it loops behind the condyle and starts innervating the medial upper shin like this but it also sends a recurrent branch up and starts innervating structures on the medial knee structures such as the medial joint capsule medial meniscus um, the uh, medial collateral ligament as well as the pes and serinus so if someone has saphenous nerve irritation they will have familiar discomfort just by pressing on this area you don't need to stress the medial knee with leverage just palpating here in this area you will generate familiar irritative symptoms, oftentimes a bruisy, achy pain. Um, and uh, you may be able to feel in the subcutaneous layer, you may be able to feel swollen branches of this recurrent branch of the saphenous nerve. It's called the infrapatellar branch of the saphenous nerve. The other kind of testing you might be doing is palpate up that sulcus, palpate up the line between the quad and the adductors. And if you get familiar tenderness all the way up, that seems to relate to this, especially if by pushing here, you actually generate some discomfort in here. That should be a further clue that the saphenous nerve is part of the story. Lastly, you may engage in some neurodynamic testing of the femoral nerve overall, which means getting our patient into a sideline position, taking the slack out of the dural tube by getting the tail to tuck and the head to flex, getting into a full slump position, and then uh, taking the leg into extension um, with a sort of inward rotation. That's a, a way of tensioning the femoral nerve and seeing if that gentle stress um, on the femoral nerve track generates familiar symptoms down here. Um, that's a neurodynamic test of the femoral and the, by extension the saphenous nerve. 
So suppose you suspect there is saphenous neuritis happening here. What are you going to do about this? What are your treatment options? Well, number one, um, naming it uh, does a lot for the rest of the healthcare team. So if you suspect this, you don't need to offer up a solid diagnosis, but you might just communicate to the other members of the healthcare team. By the way, I'm seeing familiar symptoms when I go palpating after the saphenous nerve. This may sort of uh, immobilize the whole healthcare team to a different kind of approach. Um, and in terms of treatment, there's a lot we can do for the saphenous nerve. Um, when in doubt, I work from midline out, which means I will start at the body's midline, make sure there's no dural mobility issues, make sure there's no irritation at the nerve root. Um, it may also behoove you to work the dorsal rami of L2 to L4 in the back. It may behoove you to work the lateral slope of the psoas muscle, the valley between psoas and iliacus, and do some gentle work in the inguinal canal. And then when you get to the leg, I would advise um, trying to get some pliability to that quadriceps and adductors where, while not trying to sort of uh, enact justice upon the leg. That's to say, um, in each place, try to unload the saphenous nerve, try to make life easier for it, um, and then wait. Wait for an autonomic change. Wait for a change in the muscle tone, the degree of pain perception. Wait for a change in the blood flow, a change in the breath rate, a change in the state of the defensive behavior of the system. That's the approach for the saphenous nerve. Thanks for your attention. Bye.